Hello and welcome to the Dragon's Real podcast. About two years ago, I did um, a couple of videos on how to use Foundry VTT without a system. Um, a lot of these are outdated now. Some of the modules and systems aren't uh, no longer available. So I thought it's about time to have a look at how to use Foundry VTT when there isn't a system. Now, the first thing I would recommend is when uh, you switch over to Foundry VTT and you're looking at running a game, the first thing you need to do is find out is there a system that already exists. So go to the Foundry VTT um, web page, look under systems and modules, and under game systems, have a look to see if the game system you want currently exists. If it doesn't, you can always pick something that's very similar. So for example, if you're playing a D20 game in the style of a DD, and d you could start with a base system of uh, Dungeons and & Dragons. And there are modules there that will allow you to change the attributes and alter the skills. Um, or just pick any system that it may be close to it, which may have some things that you already need there. So there's little work. But uh, I'm going to assume now that we have no system. So we're going to install the simple world building system and create a new world. And the simple world building system will be the core of it. I'm also going to recommend a few modules. Um, the two modules that uh, I heartily recommend to start with is if you want 3D dice on your um, screen, then you want to install Dice So Nice. And the one I always recommend is Dice Tray. Uh, dice Tray gives you a nice little dice tray in the bottom of the chat here. If I switch it off in core, all you get is the chat box down here. But if you have Dice Tray, uh, it's a great little way of installing a dice tray um, at the bottom of the screen. So if you want to roll dice, it's just a matter for you and your players to collect the appropriate polyhedral dice and roll it and the dice will roll and you get the output straight to chat. So that's the, the uh, first one I, I would recommend, dice tray at the bottom there. And if you want 3D dice, then dice so nice. So let's start off with the easiest way you can start. So we're going to start off with a base character sheet and we're going to use a screen with our tokens on. And for this, I'm going to use the game Troika. You can use whatever you want. And it's just a matter of creating your character sheet in here. And all we're going to do is we're going to use the description page to record our data. Uh, we might use these fields here to record hit points or health so that when you drag your item on your token onto the screen you can record it and basically all you're going to do is click on the edit and you can just record information here so for example in this tricky game you have a four in skills 22 in stamina and 12 luck and you re record the details in the front sheet um, and then when this uh, character is drawn onto the desktop, by clicking you can access the information, whatever information you want to put. And you're just basically storing text in the description page. Uh, if you wanted to um, record health, and we decided that this is health here, let's just switch this to nine and nine. We could do that by going to the token settings and in resources, use the health always displayed or and then we have the health recorded in there. So that's the first way. We can go just a little bit um, more complex than that. Uh, the way you would roll dice, obviously, is using the dice roller for whatever system you're rolling and just refer to whatever you wanted on here. So keep it nice and simple. You could also create macros. And if you know about macros, then we'll come to that after. Uh, what you can also do is put the dice rolls into the character sheet. So for example here, um, I'm going to open the character sheet and I want to roll 2d6. So I click in, on that in the character sheet, then you can do direct links from the character sheet. And all that is is two square brackets, four slash r to roll and 2d6. So you can do that. You can roll directly from the character sheet. It will appear in chat as you saw there and it'll give us the nice dice roll. 
Well, there's a little bit more work. You can actually make this a little complicated. So in this game system, uh, our luck is 12 and we want to roll 2d6, add them together and see if we can roll less than the luck number. And a success is counted as less than 12. And same with the skills down here. Uh, the luck skill is 8, so we're rolling 2d6 and we're trying to score less than 8. So by using those um, in the in the character sheet, I can make a roll here. I roll 7, which is obviously less than 8, so success is counted as 1. If I roll this one and I roll higher than the number, which 6 is higher than, is not less than 6, so that's a 0. So then I've got some nice, it's not pretty, but I can roll dice from the character sheet as well. If you've got something a bit more complicated, you can actually roll macros through your character sheet. So let's have a look. I've created this uh, macro down here. Um, we'll edit the macro. So basically, I'm rolling 4d6. I'm adding plus 1d6 explodes, and that's going to be a white dice. So by dragging, going into edit mode, and dragging this number next to one of the um, skills, it will put up this u. UID, which identifies what the macro is, but when I save it, it will come as whatever the name of the macro is. So if I click on that now, this will roll my 4D6 and a white D6 and I'll put it to chat. So if you've got some nice complex macros, you can also do that. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done. So that's the first way to do it. The second way to do it is if you have a PDF uh, fillable character sheet. For this, you're going to have to install a module called PDF Pager. Now, in my previous video, we used PDF Foundry. That model has now been rescinded and PDF Pager is now taken over. So we've got PDF Pager. In the settings, we want to go into the PDF Pager settings. We want to make sure support form fillable PDFs is ticked. And we also want to identify what our default character sheet is. So I've got a character sheet for a system called Hollow Earth Expedition. I can link to it and now that link is attached to that form. So when I create a character, <coughs> what happens is let's just create a new character. Test two. For the sheet, now we've got that ticked. We can select PDF sheet in the top and then the default sheet, PDF sheet again. And instead of showing us a simple world building box, it will now produce this form here. So here is one I've got and I can just fill in the details. Big Jenny and I can fill in my name and fill in all the boxes. Now it's not interactive, but I can record the details in here. What I can also do then is create some macros. And if I want to uh, roll um, the dice, I, again, I can just refer to that. Roll some dice in here using it as a reference sheet. This rolls a system where you have a dice pool and you want to, to see how many dice roll more than four. So we can create a macro for that. So if I go into my macros, I've created a one here. This is a script. I can drag this script into my hotbar. And every time I want to roll a dice, so say I want to roll charisma, I know it's two dice. Click on the macro, it'll tell me how many dice I want to roll. Click roll and it'll roll the dice and do all the work for me and roll any sixes or whatever the system does. So uh, that's two systems. Uh, each uses a reference. Um, I know what you're going to ask now is what happens if I've got a system where it's got an unusual die system? Because this has got our D4 to our D100s. If I want to roll a D13, it doesn't matter with this. You can roll a D13 uh, and it will roll a dice and output result of 1 to 13. Um, if it got anything a bit more complicated, like then the best way to do it is to make a table. And I'll do this example from Troika, which I was looking at. Um, 
when you roll damage for the weapon, you roll a d6. It's actually d7 because you can add um, numbers to it. But for each of the results, you can add what the result is. What I also recommend is in the configure settings on the core, you switch off animate roll table because if you don't, every time it will open up this and it will flick through. Well, this way, I'm just rolling straight from the table. So with sword damage, I can roll it and it's rolling now put to chat. So I could actually create any table I wanted to here. So if I wanted to create a table with directions, I could do so. Let's have a 1d4. And in this, I just want north, south, east, and west. And when I roll that, that will output that to chat each time I roll it. But it's a pain in the, the bum once you open the table each time. So there's two ways we can get around this. The first way is we drag the roll table directly into our hotbar. And then when we click on that, it will click up the roll table and then it will roll it when we click on it. But again, yeah, okay, it opens the table, but we can make it just a little bit more easier by having a script which says game.tables, get name, the name of the table, and it will draw it instead. So let's copy that. We've now got one called directions, so we'll create a new table called script. Directions. Put the script in. Change the name to directions, because that's the name of the table. And now when I execute it, it will execute it directly to chat without any pop-ups whatsoever. So when you click on it, it'll just click direct to chat each time. So it doesn't open anything. So that's the second way. Nice and easy, PDFs, first way, simple world building. And the third and final way I'm gonna show you is something called free form character sheets. So this is another module that you want to install. It's called Freeform Sheets. And for this, instead of PDF character sheets, you need sheets in either JPEG or PNG format. Once it's installed, go to the configure settings, Freeform Sheets. In the Freeform Sheets configuration, you want to add a sheet, pick the JPEG that you want, and it will give you the JPEG and create a a default actor with it and the default sheet under here is Ghostbusters because that's the name of the file that I've used. So if I go to uh, this one, when I create a character, create a new actor, it's, it's still showing me as a PDF at the moment because um, I used PDFs for the previous sheet. So if I go back to sheets, well, building sheets and go back to there. This will take me back to the default sheet. Now, what we do is if we click the freeform sheet, this will open the box here, which will give us a nice uh, sheet. The other way to open it is if you right click and pick the, the name of the sheet, the freeform sheet, it will open it each time. Now, if you go into configure settings, you can configure this so that um, override the player's actor sheets. If you tick that on the players, whenever they click on their character, instead of opening up the default sheet, which is what happens for the GM, it will automatically open this sheet. So same as the um, PDF sheet, this is a fillable box. Right clicking, you can fill in text. So we can create alien here. We can alter the size of the, the text. Let's create some more text here. We can alter the size of the text, which applies to everything. We can alter the color, which applies to everything on the sheet. We can also um, change uh, colors of the sheet as well. And similarly, you can also drag in um, macros so if i drag this macro in 
that we created for directions that will appear in the sheet. And when I click on it, it will roll it direct to the chat. Uh, if you notice with this one that I created for Ghostbusters, because at the time the Ghostbusters module was broken, um, I've created a module, uh, a macro for each number of dice so that I can roll them directly. I've also got a one for any number of dice that is more than 10 that I can roll. And what you can also do is um, make items and drag the items onto the character sheet as well. And this probably works in simple world building. So I've created a bit of gear here, which is just a picture and a name. Um, and then by dragging it onto the sheet, it will appear on the sheet once it's unlocked because I've locked it up. So if I drag this beach kit on here, you can see now the beach kit appears here. If I lock the sheet, it stops me moving things around. And when I click on the items, it pops up. Um, so they are, there's three nice simple methods for creating uh, playing foundry with a system that doesn't exist. Uh, you've got the simple world building, the character sheets where you just record the text into them. And if you want, you can add dice rolls. You've got the PDF versions where you can use a fillable PDF just to record the details. And finally, you've got the free form sheets. Uh, please note if you're watching this in the future and this is being filmed in March of 2023, then we are using version 10 of Foundry and version 0.72 of Simple World Building. I have found that as the versions of Foundry change, then it causes some of these modules to break, other functionality to break. So if you're watching this in the future, then I will, uh, you'll have to install version 10 of Foundry and the Simple World Building as well. Well, I hope that you find that all helpful. I'll catch you all on the flip side.